He took a young boy lunch, multiplied and fed thousands of men and women. People literally got the breakthrough. They tasted the breakthrough. They smelled it and they tasted it. They saw Jesus Christ performing that miracle right in front of them. Anyone who is acquainted with the ministry of God and the ministry of Jesus Christ will be acquainted with uh, the operations of miracles because everywhere in the scriptures, God was involved, miracles manifested. Men came to listen to the word of God and they were there for long. The disciples first approached Jesus and said to him, release these people to go to the nearby villages to find something to eat. But Jesus Christ looked at them and said, feed them yourselves. They said, even if we'll have wages for a full year, how are we going to feed the multitude? May I tell you that God is asking you to do the impossible. That's right. The assignment that God has laid on your shoulders in the natural realm, looking at them, you are afraid. You do not know literally how you will go about fulfilling it. It seems like when God gives you a mission, it's always bigger than you. When you look around, what you come across is so little that it's literally insignificant to the fulfillment of vision. You have to fulfill something, but nobody is supporting you. But Jesus said that, go, go with me. One man with God is majority. They came in the numbers. They came because they wanted experience again. They wanted it again. They wanted to eat bread again. So when they got there at the boat, they saw that there was no boat except the boat used by the disciples of Jesus. And that Jesus was not with them. They jumped into their own boat. They came the following day looking for him. He was not around. They entered into boats and they went where they thought that he would be. And when they got to the other side in Capernaum, they found him. How did you get here? They asked. Lord, we're looking for you. This is a presentation of Alleluia Ministries International. How did you get here? So Jesus Christ started putting things in perspective. He said to them, you are seeking for me not because of the signs, but of the bread. Now, we, we got to think in the Holy Ghost to figure this truth out. By breaking it down to dissect and suck in it whatever juice we can find in it. He said to them, you are seeking after me looking for me not because of the signs but because of the loaves of bread now the reason why i want you to ponder on this is because the loaf of bread was the sign that's right that's right riba soto and there was no mistake in multiplying the boys launch to feed them. Because nothing in God just happens. Now that he got their attention. Now that they started believing in him. Now that their belief were at activated in a way that they were no longer passive but active. They entered both to seek him. He changed the gear. Jesus is Lord. He said, you did not come after me because of the sign. But you came because of the bread. But the bread was the sign. That's right. There, there, there was no other sign that day except what he did. But you see, he wanted their attention. He wanted to move them from passivity to begin 
to see, to test what was spiritual. And when they ran after it, he now redirected it in its true perspective. That uh, the power of God that uh, you should be desiring must go beyond the mere fact that uh, you have a job, you have been promoted, you have an increase. The increase was a manifestation of my power. The job was a manifestation of my power. But you must understand beyond the simple manifestation of getting employment after employment, jobs after jobs, increase after increase, you must be in the place where you begin to believe in me. You believe in me as a source. Oh yes. In no way was he saying oh well overlook every miracle that I had performed that day. Overlook the fact that you ate bread. In no way he was trying to push that agenda because you see he carried on in the ministry of demonstration. So he just wanted the attention first. And once he got the attention, he was putting it in perspective. You see, uh, I had a knee problem. I came to God and God healed my knee. Now God wants my relationship with him to go beyond what he can solve in my life. It may not be anymore a relationship based on his hand towards me but his face towards me. So I'm no longer seeking the hand of God only. I am seeking the face of God. Amen. Because you see, the hand of God provides, but the face of God is relationship. I am not a believer anymore because I have few reins, few dollars in my wallet. I am a believer because I know the one who made heaven and earth is a faithful God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? He said, you seek me now, not because of the signs, but because of the loaves you have eaten. The argument, the debate, the talk, immediately was centralized around the sign. If the church has to be the church, there must be evidence that this is the church. Amen. Amen. That's right. The evidence must go beyond the gatherings because gatherings is too blurry to be a proof that this is the church. Because there are many gatherings everywhere. All types of gatherings. Wherever God is involved. Miracles manifest. That's right. I receive this word. Today, somebody is about to receive a miracle. I receive it. Because where God is involved, In the name of Jesus. miracles manifest. But yet, putting it in perspective, he desired that they may cleave and seek him not merely because they ate bread they must know him as the baker the forever faithful that is always there come rain or sunshine he is still on his throne mm. and that this is important because no matter how hard you try you pray you stand in faith you will always be tested that's right everything all the time if you are tested today you'll be tested tomorrow it may be a different test in a different area of your life but tests when those tests come it's not always pleasing they are not pleasant. So now, if your life and your love to God depends on the fact that there is no test, your peace depends on the weather. When the weather is calm, you are 
full of peace. And when the weather is a bit pushy, you get out of peace. Today you'll be in church, tomorrow you'll be in the bar. Today you'll be in God, tomorrow you mock God. He say, I want you to get in a place where you're not seeking me just because of what I can give you. That's right. Jesus. But because the debate had turned to revolve around signs, they say to him, which sign do you do that we may believe in you? You want us to believe, but you got to give us something. Meet us halfway. What is it that you do? Now, Jesus Christ had operated great miracles. His life was a wonder. Signs were everywhere in his ministry. There was no day where Jesus Christ was spoken about and there was nothing supernatural that happened. He really moved and walked in the supernatural. But I hear they're asking him for a sign, a simple thing that we all know, reading the scripture, that he was able to give them to meet their desire and quench their, their thirst. You want a sign? Which one? Do you want stone to turn into bread? Do you want water to turn into wine? Do you want the wind to stop? Do you want... He could have done anything, but he refused to do. He could have done literally anything, but he deprived them from it. They made an argument, a theological argument with Jesus Christ. They say, our fathers... The reason why we're talking about sign is because our fathers ate manna from heaven. For Moses had written the prophet that Moses brought manna in the time of our fathers. So we believed in Moses because of the signs. The reason why we are still into this thing of God is because we are sustained by some old tired signs. Some people's faith is uh, based on some old tired signs. God is about to renew your faith by Thank giving you, you stronger things to build on. Hallelujah. They say the reason why you see us still in this path is because of Moses. And in his time, our fathers had bread. And Jesus Christ said, Moses, in fact, did not give you that bread. It was my heavenly father. And he carried on and say, presenting himself as a bread of life. He carried on and say, but now you're about to receive bread that comes from heaven. Because the true bread that you receive is that which comes from heaven. And is able to give life to the world. Talking about himself. You will read and study to conclude that what he was after was not that they may speak about the bread but they may have a relationship Reba with him said, as the bread. Jesus. Jesus. He wanted to become the bread. Because later on he said that I am the bread. The bread of life. Yes. You ate what's supposed to lead you to hear. The healing that you got was not all that I have for you. I do not want you to follow me as if I am your medical aid. Oh God. Your medical aid here is a medical insurance. I want you to follow me because you know me as your God, your healer, your master, your Lord, your creator, your savior. Jesus. Hallelujah. They said to him, show us a sign that we may believe because our belief has to be sustainable and we can only sustain it through an evidence. We had an evidence. We read what was done with our forefathers you also if you want us to believe show us an evidence and he said to them 
The evidence is me. I'm a miracle working God. Amen. I'm a way maker. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a bread giver. Mm. The living water is I. If you believe in me, the bread of life. He said, the true bread is not the manner you ate. Mm -mm. The true bread is the one that comes from heaven that gives life to the world. And when they heard it, they say, oh Lord, give us this bread always. Give us this bread always. It is the same teaching that he kept on emphasizing throughout his ministry. The Bible say in the book of John chapter 4, the experience with a Samaritan woman who had asked for water. And he had said that, uh, please first give me water. And when this woman uh, said that, uh, why would you being a Jew ask me a Samaritan to give you water? There is no link between us Samaritan and you Jews. That uh, you may ask for water. He said, woman, if you knew who's asking you for water, you yourself would have oh, asked. Yes. If you knew who is he that is asking you for water, you yourself would have asked him for water and he would have given you the living water. He's talking about water in different dimensions. We're talking about water. I'm asking you, give me water. But I am on the other side saying that if you knew who's asking you for water, you would have asked him for water and he would have given you water that is everlasting. Now the question is, if you knew that you had everlasting water, why did you in the first place ask me for water? Are they the same type of water or are we talking about different type of water? You are talking about bread. I am the bread of life. You ate the bread. The Somebody bread that you ate came from bread. a lunch that a young boy brought along in the crowd. But I want you to understand there is a different type of bread that is oh, baked Jesus. in heaven. If you shall eat of it, you shall live and die no more. May I speak to somebody? There is a higher level the Lord is taking you to. I tap into that higher level. There is a higher level somebody. the Lord is taking you to. I, I don't that. know how many of you I'm speaking to. But there is somebody here who's receiving this word. I God is taking you higher. That. God is giving you more. I receive more. In Jesus' name. Water, not water. Bread, not okay. bread. Higher level. Hallelujah. Are you ready for it? We are ready. There are things that God gives us that sustains us not for a season. Yes. But it sustains us for a lifetime. Amen. So much so that many will begin to ask you, we don't understand what goes on with you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what hits us all, you remain standing. They begin to search and some will say, if only I have half of what you have, I will win in every battle. Because they know of your battle, but they do not understand your victory. That's right. They have seen how men stood against you. Mm -hmm. They just do not know how you came out of it. Jesus. The reason why you came out of it is because you are made with materials Somebody. that are linked to God. What the Lord has given you is more than what can be bought in the marketplace. I receive it. What the Lord has given you is more than what material things can produce. I believe. The Lord has given you things inside you that will sustain you. Come winds or high water. I, I don't know how many people I'm speaking to. I but if you will shout. In the name of Jesus. It is yours. It is mine. Jesus. He heals you. But he said, don't focus on the healing you got. 
Focus on serving me. That's right. Through the healing ministry. Riba Soto. Because you see, the ultimate, the ultimate is not that you may receive it. The ultimate is that uh, it may dwell in you and uh, you may produce it consistently. You are not just blessed. You become a blessing. Thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. We trust that you have been blessed. For more information and resources, visit our website on www.alaleoministries.com. For our prayer line, you may call the numbers on your screen. Tune in to our next broadcast and stay blessed.